Hands up to three. I'm so glad that I did this project with my students. I am the science teacher for both fifth grade classes at our school. And the way that we schedule it is they have science four days a week. And I teach three of those days. And then one day a week, we have a science lab. And we have a science lab instructor, Mrs. Swain. And she and I co-teach in the science lab. And I absolutely love teaching science. I have a science background. I majored in biology. And it is definitely one of my passions about teaching is to get the kids excited about science. And now all year long we have lots of different science units. And throughout all of those units, I try to do some type of hands-on activity or project with them. So for the past five years that I've taught here, I've been wanting to do something more uh, that is a little bit more in depth with the engineering process, building it, testing it, and redesigning it, and improving it, and then testing it again, and then redesigning it, and adjusting it, and then testing it again. And that's something that I totally found in this project. Um, I saw on Matt Rober's YouTube video um, about a month ago, on his video he talked about mousetrap cars and how to make the best mousetrap car. And I had never heard of mousetrap cars before this. I watched the video and I was totally absorbed into it and fascinated with uh, how he uses mechanical advantage in order to make the mousetrap cars go farther. They go really in depth with this project and there's actually competitions across the country. I was amazed and I thought that night, my fifth graders could do this. I did a quick search and I found out that there are mousetrap car kits that you can buy that range from fourth grade all the way up to college. I immediately knew that I wanted to do. I wanted to do it right away, so the next day I talked to Mrs. Swain and, and she was on board and she actually sent me an article that talked about how teaching students nowadays is not just rote learning. It, we really need to work on getting these kids working together and collaborating and being problem solvers and that's something this project really focuses on well. I took her article and I transformed it into a little packet that I made that I'll put in the description below. It's kind of a work in progress, it's just my first draft. This is my, only my first year doing it, so anyway, I got, we got approval to do the mousetrap car kits. We had some extra money, so we went for it. Probably won't do the, the kits next year, uh, but I'll talk about that a little bit in my reflections at the end. Anyway, I ordered the kits, and I told the students about it before the kits even arrived, and they were all excited about it and totally pumped, and you know, they didn't, you know, care to learn more about just from another lecture or another video. They wanted to get their hands dirty and get working together and, and actually build something. And so they were really pumped about it. I thought it was perfect because I get little boxes and the students can store their mousetrap cart in the box, keep all their supplies contained and, you know, pull it out and work on it and then put it back and stack them and it doesn't take up a whole lot of space. So that's something that I really loved about it. As they built them, they really learned about the design process and how to engineer it. And if you fail, then that's a good thing because you can learn from that and make it better. This one we go right here and we cut it right there. But the problem is, how would we glue it? Here. So if I go like this, yeah. we can go like that. Yeah. Does it hit this part of the wood? Yes. Yeah. We can't like move it into. The Okay. I mean, we could move this. What kind of drill would you bring? Maybe an, a battery powered one. If we could make this hole right a little here, bigger, a little bigger, yeah. then we could probably fit it. Then, but still the same thing here. Uh, what exactly do you need help with? Some of them were doing research on the computers. Some of them were bringing stuff from home. They got really creative with some of their designs. And today is race day. What we have been doing is we've been doing trial runs in the hallway um, during class time. And this has been going on for the past four weeks. 
three or four weeks, I can't remember exactly. They've been building and putting them together, and then those who are ready, I do a trial run out in the hallway. What is this? Is this the first backwards one? Yeah. So this is the first backwards one and they put rubber... Did you put balloons? Yeah. Balloons around the wheels instead of rubber bands. And single. This is the first... This is the first tricycle. Wait, 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 wait. Still going. No, it's like stuck in here. I think there's too much string, oh, so it got. Go. Oh, oh! Why did it stop? It like skidded to a stop. Did the string? Maybe the string got caught. Oh, it's not oh. like a ton left. It could have gone like way farther. So maybe adjust that a little bit, and then maybe that'll be better the second round. So these are Heelys, right? Yeah. A rhino horn on it. A rhino horn, okay, very good. I needed it. Alright, rhino horn and, also, yeah. and Achilles. No! Maybe it was tight, winded too tight. Oh, good. I'm so sorry. Oh, there it goes. What? That doesn't count though. It Go! Oh, oh. Um. Nope, same thing. Go! Whoa! Yay! Nice. It just turned a little. Oh, there's going. I, I just don't think it has enough energy to move the wobbly wheels. See, because the trap here is pulling, but it doesn't have enough force to get it to move. I think it's because the wheels are too heavy or too wobbly. See, if we lift it up, the wheels will probably spin. It spin. Oh, there we go. I feel like that. So it worked, but it couldn't do it on its own power. So you guys are going to have to try So today is the final day, the culminating event, where they get to take their final product. We're going to go down to the auditorium and we're going to set up a starting line and we're going to see whose goes the farthest. I decided not to race them side by side because I don't want to deal with them hitting each other because some of them turn. Uh, so we're just going to do one at a time. I'm going to give them two chances. Two chances to see which, uh, whatever their f farthest distance is. And then the winner is going to get a special prize. I am going to buy them a snack and a drink from the vending machines down there. But the best part is, is that we get to sit and stare at the vending machine as the screw dispenses the snack from the vending machine. And we get to stand in awe at the beauty of Simple Machines and how it provides you know luxury in our everyday lives and all of them are graded on it I have the packet and they are going to answer questions in it and they write down their observations and what they're going to improve for each trial run after they do it. after they do every trial run they record their observations and what they're going to change about it and their distance and most of their learning came from experience and growth from working together and um, failing and uh, learning from their mistakes and and to use that to build a better car now at the deadline rather than at the beginning when they first put it together. Working together with their partner was one of the key goals of the project. Use each other's strengths and weaknesses in order to build the best car that they could build as a team. Some students had some troubles working together. Um, some students worked it out and um, really, uh, I think, learned from the experience of collaborating together. Alright, I'm gonna go downstairs and set up the starting line. Just need to get some tape. The reason that I'm doing it down in the auditorium is because of the fact that I want a wide open space. The hallway is just a little bit too narrow uh, for the cars because a lot of them turn. They learned a lot about how wobbly wheels doesn't allow the car to go straight. So um, the smoother the wheels turning on the axle uh, allows for a smoother ride and it goes st straighter. Um, so right here is going to be the space. I think they'll have lunch time going on on this side of the auditorium, but on this side there should be plenty of room for them to race their cars. 
I just need to set up a little bit of a boundary and a starting line with these so that they know where to stand so that they don't accidentally step in the way of the cars. Okay, so here's the starting line, and I put it as like a V so that my students would line up along this side and line up along this side so that they could watch. Usually what happens is they go fairly straight. They kind of maybe curve to the right a little bit or maybe curve to the left a little bit. Some of them actually go really straight. Um, it should be plenty of distance, I hope. There's some chairs over there, so hopefully that won't be a problem. But some of them curve a little bit, and then if they hit the audience, well then... <laughs> you know there's nothing you can do about that so I'll probably set up a camera right there and then I'll probably set up a camera over there with a the tripod so I could film from different angles We got So debriefing race day um, went pretty well for the most part. I think most of the kids had fun and enjoyed it and um, learned something. It was kind of interesting the dynamic between the two classes. Um, my class had a little bit more trouble being encouraging and um, we got into some arguments and some frustrations and some tears and some broken mousetrap cars so uh, some of them were pretty disappointed because on the final race day uh, their car didn't perform the way that they wanted it to so um, but you know that's science and sometimes when you have something ready to go on the day that it's due or on the deadline it doesn't perform the way you want it to and um, 
you know, learning from failure is what this lesson is all about. I had to remind my class because they weren't listening very well and uh, they weren't respecting each other very well by focusing on whose turn it was to race. So I had to tell them that I was disappointed in the way that most of them were behaving. Some of them were doing great, but you know, others were not. I had to make that clear to them that I was not happy with how they were doing for the most part. But at the same time, I was very proud of all their progress up until th this day. I encouraged them by saying that I was really proud of what they did and how they were working as teammates to, in order to do their very best. Even though some of them didn't really have a chance, uh, they still got up there and did what they could and, and hopefully they learned something from that. The other class, my team teacher's class, the other class that I teach that only comes in to my class for science, they did a whole lot better being encouraging towards one another and they were focused on uh, all of the, I guess, one of the problems was is that I didn't reserve a time in the auditorium for a time that would work best. Um, I should have planned ahead a little bit more with that. My team teacher's class did a better job because of the fact that we were all in the same spot for the entire race, for, for the entire period for all of the races. However, for my class, um, because it was going over a little bit, the, it was taking a little bit longer than expected, um, we had to leave the auditorium and go to the gym. And um, be, I think because we made that transition mid, uh, in the middle of the period, we made that transition to the gym and it kind of threw everything off and kind of disorganized the kids and I think that that can definitely be handled better on my part next year as I uh, plan a little bit better. You know, but that happens, you know, the first year you do something there's always kinks in it and, and so I'll plan better next time. A handful of kids were frustrated because they did not get a prize and some of them wanted a first, second, third place prize. but. What, I'm do what I decided the prize would be is, oh, I already mentioned this earlier in the video, is that um, their prize is coming out of my own pocket. Like, I'm paying for this with my own money uh, to get them a treat from the vending machine, and that's one, two, uh, three, four people between both classes, and then a drink and a snack. A drink and a snack for each one of them. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight items for all the winners. So, I don't feel like that is unreasonable. I, I think it's okay to just give one prize to each class. At the end, after we debriefed, one of my students suggested that all of the stu all of the cars that get past a certain line, that they would get a prize. So essentially, if all of the students could get past a certain line, a certain goal, then they would all get prizes. Um, that'd be kind of embarrassing for the one. It, like if there's one that didn't get past there, then everybody would get a prize except one. So I don't know. What do you, what do you guys think about rewarding prizes for winners in a competition like this? Um, I don't really know. Since it's the first time I did it, I feel like it went okay. Um, you know, there's bound to be students who are sad and frustrated and maybe shedding tears, and um, but others that don't really care. Let me know what you guys have done with competitions at your school. Uh, I'd love to hear your feedback on that. Some changes for next year. So after reflecting on what we've done with this, uh, I definitely want to change a few things. Next year, I do not want to do kits. Um, I'd say about half of the students in my class liked the kits and about half of them didn't. So I'm probably going to next year not do the kits because, that one, the kits are expensive. It'd probably be much cheaper just to get some chunks of wood and um, some wheels or something that they can attach to a little dowel and definitely going to go cheaper next year not spend as much and um, that way they can also be more creative uh, I felt like they were when when they were doing the kits they had instructions and they had a set of guidelines for you know step one step two step three and um, I told them that they could branch out and be creative and you know adjust their design but we only had a few a few kids that actually did that, actually changed the design drastically. Um, and I really gave a lot of praise for those groups who were creative and thought outside of the box. But next year, I'm not going to do the kit, and I'm just going to give them like a block of wood, say put the mousetrap on there. You can 
add to it. Maybe you can make it longer or shorter depending on how long you want to do it. That way they can add an arm to the mousetrap lever. Um, they can add their own wheels if they want. Um, I think if we do that, there'll probably be more students that bring in um, Lego wheels or um, wheels off of their you know, remote control cars or something, and that way that they will incorporate more ideas for them. Um, the most creative group was the one where the wheels were huge. And the awesome thing about that is that it, it showed that mechanical advantage allowed uh, them to get a great distance over, um, over that span with just increasing the wheel size. It would not have gone as far if it had a smaller wheel. Um, the disadvantage is that they used this really thick, heavy wood, so it went really slowly and it didn't go very far. So that was a learning experience, but I'm going to give them props for being creative and thinking outside the box. And I was really happy with the fact that they had lots of time to do trial runs and practice in the hallway and um, adjust their design, but I think learning from the mistakes and adjusting their design will sink in a whole lot more if... Um, if it wasn't, if they weren't starting from a kit. So, uh, but I might change my mind next year and go back to the kit, so I'm not really sure. Um, I'll probably try and film this again next year and see how it goes a second time and, uh, and then share my reflections about that as well. I asked my students in a Google form earlier this morning to share their thoughts on how they felt like the project went and what they thought about it. So let's hear some of their responses. Um, here's an interesting one. Uh, this person, uh, this student responded and said, I think our car will do fine because I, uh, so this was right at the very beginning of the morning and I asked them uh, how you felt about race day, how do you think your car is going to do, what did you learn, stuff like that. And this student said, I think our car will do fine. I think the car will only go 300 or 200 centimeters. I learned that if you don't glue the body correctly, you can't do anything. Lastly, I learned that the more string and the tinier the mousetrap, the less it will push. So that's something that they learned is the longer the string, the, uh, the less likely it is to go as far. The shorter the string was usually better. One student said, I'm nervous because it went really bad, but we fixed the problem on the mousetrap car. I think we will do well today. I learned that it can be hard to put something together, but it just does something really simple. I think ours is the coolest, lo coolest looking car. <laughs> so some really had a great time with their design and being creative with their paint job and uh, their, the name for their car and um, the way they dressed it up. And uh, So a lot of them had a lot of fun with that, even though some of them don't really enjoy science all that much. It kind of had an art artistic piece to it. So that was fun. One student said, I'm worried that our car won't go as far as I hoped and that it doesn't crash. I learned that a lot of the things we're using are simple machines. I need to do one more test run for the car to make sure it doesn't crash again. I really hope we are at least in the top five. I learned that our car is fast, but it has a really wobbly wheel. <laughs> so they learned about you know, adjusting the wobbly, uh, the wobbly wheels and making sure that you know, they're gluing accurately and um, being careful with that. A lot of them learned that after the fact, but Hopefully that'll help them in the future with projects like this uh, in middle school and high school. Another student said, I think our car will do just decent because it kept wobbling and turning to the left a lot. I don't really care about winning or losing, but I do feel like I've learned a lot. I've learned about building and teamwork a lot because at the beginning my partner, my partner and I didn't really have a strong teamwork, but now we do. That's great to hear. Uh, that's really something that I was really excited about is the fact that hopefully the students will learn something about teamwork because the article that I read about science and um, I'll try and post the, the article down below. Uh, it was a magazine article that my coworker shared with me and in the article it talked about the, the importance of training kids for the future and how important it is that they learn teamwork and problem solving skills and stuff like that and that's what I really wanted for this is learning them to learn from their learn from their mistakes and learn teamwork and collaboration and um, and how to problem solve together as a team because that is something that's really lacking in a lot of schools these days at least in my class that's something I need to work on in incorporating more 
Um, so problem solving and collaborating with other students is something that a lot of businesses and, and companies really admire when they are looking to hire people uh, as they grow up. So if you can start them young, even younger than fifth grade, that would be awesome. So that's what I'm trying to do with this. Uh, that's a big piece. It's not just the science, it's also the, the social learning too. Another student said, I don't feel very good about it. My partner always wanted to race the cars even though we really needed to improve our design. I think we'll need to work on it a little bit more during recess. Our car does have pizzazz, <laughs> but it isn't the best that we could have done. I really learned a lot about how you need to wind the string so that it will go farther. Okay, good. Um, I think our mousetrap car will get first place. I feel confident that we will win. Ooh, there's a lot of positivity there. I learned that our car turns to the right now that there's no brake system. I also learned that we'll have that we had many brake systems, one problem after another. Um, uh, another problem that the students kept running into was that they, when the string would wrap around the axle, um, the string was so long that it would stay wrapped, and then then it would rewind back onto it, and then it would, and then it would catch and then stop. So like it went a certain distance, but then it would rewind and then catch, and then it would just break suddenly. It would stop. Whereas it, what it's supposed to do is it's supposed to unwind and then release from the axle so that it would keep rolling and keep cruising. Um, so a lot of students didn't figure that out until like the day or two before race day, which didn't give them a whole lot of time to fix. Um, but it's very interesting reading these comments because some are very, um, some are very positive and very confident about their car's ability, but others are kind of frustrated and and um, feeling a little bit down. So I think next year I will do a better job to to g maybe give some examples of how students have encountered mistakes and frustrations and then uh, remind them that even though there's obstacles with that you encounter with building your mousetrap car overcoming those obstacles and getting past that and problem solving and working together in order to figure out how to fix that problem is something that is so crucial not only to win but to do well in life and um, and to be successful as you grow up Another student said, I feel okay about it, and I'm not sure if it's going to the left or to the right or if it'll go straight. Mostly I think it's going to go to the right. I learned that simple machines can do a lot for you. I love that we did this project. It was fun. <laughs> so I'm glad that most of my students had a great time with it, and I feel like doing stuff like this is really going to be a lasting memory for them. Um, all the projects that I remember in school were the ones that were obviously not lecture and not just you know, uh, learning from a worksheet, but things where they actually got their hands dirty. Um, one of the, my favorite projects that I remember was in eighth grade history when we were learning about the Civil War and we actually like went out into the parking lot and lined up as like a unit and we marched. We, we were taught how to march and we actually got out there and I remember for my group I made dog tags for us because it was a simulation and it was a whole lot of fun. and. Um, and this ha type of hands-on learning and this type of, um, you know, getting your hands dirty and collaborative work is something that I hope that my students will cherish and remember, you know, back when they're adults, that they'll remember fifth grade and, um, and hopefully learn that learning from your mistakes is something that can be really advantageous for the whole rest of your life because that's something I'm still working on. I'm still making mistakes and I'm still learning from them. and. And I hope that I continue to grow in that way, just like I hope my students will too. So, um, thanks so much for watching. If you're thinking about doing something like this, just go for it and try it because um, it was totally worth it, even though it did not go as well as I had hoped. Um, uh, I enjoyed it for the most part, and uh, I feel like it did these kids a lot of good. And I even I've even gotten a lot of parents' feedback saying that their kids are really into it and really excited um, from day one when I in introduced it. So, um, so yeah, uh, Mousetrap Cars, year one down, um, and hopefully I'll keep doing this into the future and, and it'll just keep getting better and better. <sighs> All right, Whew. that was a lot of work. Glad it's over now. Talk to you guys later. Bye.